I'm delighted to welcome Philo Martina, um, CEO and co-founder of WAM. Um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity. Excellent. So I guess the first thing I want to find out is what do you do in your organization? Well, since leaving uh, Cranfield, I've taken uh, care of building a, a, a new team, building a new company from scratch. Uh, One3D is a spin-out company of uh, Cranfield University, uh, which we, in which we are commercializing the wire plus art additive manufacturing uh, process. Um, and so the main role I've got at the moment is to build all of the backend infrastructure, anything from HR to operations to finance and accounting, uh, to make sure we are ready uh, to commercialize the products uh, as soon as possible, which should be uh, uh, later on in the year. Okay, so it sounds like quite a challenging role, but very varied. Yeah, that's very much the case. And actually, the first part of the year for me was all about making sure that I was taking care of this transition properly. Obviously, at Cranfield, I've been exposed to a lot of uh, managerial uh, duties and responsibilities as part of my senior lecturer role. Uh, but moving to industry, building a company from scratch, uh, doing so in the middle of the COVID pandemic were uh, rather uh, uh, challenging uh, steps to take. Uh, and so it's been a rather interesting couple of months up, up until now. Definitely. I think the whole world had to change overnight, quite literally, in our term, terms of work. So you've, you've had a very varied and interesting career from what you say, having started off at Cranfield and then moving on out into industry. Um, how do you see your career progressing? Well, the first um, objective for me right now in my new role is to literally build the best company ever. I would like to have a team of motivated people that come to work uh, excited on a Monday morning and uh, hopefully don't want to leave too early on a Friday afternoon. Uh, this is a condition that is absolutely necessary for our uh, business objective of uh, getting the WAM technology out there as much as possible. And then as part of our uh, mission, really, we definitely want to change the, the face of manufacturing. And of course, these three objectives will take quite some time, which is why I am really focusing only on, on this at the moment. Yeah, now that sounds absolutely great. And um, you know, nice to know that there's going to be another um, parallel organization to Cranfield, which indeed, uh, Cranfield University, a great place to work. So absolutely. Um, Philo, what impact do you see your organization making on the future of manufacturing and materials within the green recovery? When we started developing the WAM process and the large scale metal AM uh, or 3D printing in general, uh, we very much saw this new technology as a substitute technology to go and replace uh, other established processes like forging or casting or uh, machining from solid. Uh, some of these processes have got uh, extremely long lead times, extremely high manufacturing waste and cost, and actually they've got a rather uh, important impact uh, on, on uh, emissions and the environment in general. So as part of the development of WAM, we've also focused very carefully on demonstrating the benefit from the life cycle point of view. And indeed, we have demonstrated that uh, by substituting uh, some of these established processes with ours, uh, we can reduce waste substantially, uh, reduce energy consumption, and therefore also CO2 emissions. So as part of our mission, we're really putting a lot of emphasis on underlining how uh, one indeed will make uh, manufacturing better, but also the whole environment better as well. Philo, that sounds like you're going to make a huge impact on the future and the 21st century. I'm interested. You have a background in additive manufacturing. What inspired you to go down that route? It was an absolute coincidence, actually. I was always fascinated by new technology, uh, being, uh, I guess, uh, Generation Y or X, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and actually, it was during my MSc at Cranfield, which I was doing within a double degree program, uh, that I came across uh, the WAM process for the first time just by looking at a metal object on the desk of a former lecturer of mine. And that, that's how it really started. So at that point, I had the possibility of uh, trying to find a job or maybe continue uh, with a PhD uh, that was offered to me by, by Cranfield as well. And I decided to stay and make additive uh, my own career. And after 11 years, here I am still uh, very much excited by what uh, 3D printing can bring to the world of manufacturing. 
And, and I think that's quite key, actually, that you still need that passion and that energy and that focus um, after 11 years and obviously beyond, because from what you're saying, um, you've got a few boxes that you want to tick and things that you want to make sure happen. Um, so you've had a really successful career to date. Um, what advice have you got for somebody um, starting off and um, interested in this field? I guess drawing from what I've just said and uh, you have underlined as well, the most important thing for me would be to find something that you really love, uh, focus on it and eventually make it uh, your career. Uh, if you are uh, day in, day out, busy with something that you don't like, uh, life is really hard. So the first suggestion is find your passion and make it your career. And then in order to do that successfully, my second advice would be to uh, develop and focus on your long-term goals. And effectively, you should think about yourself as your own company, de defining your own strategy to see yourself uh, where you want to be in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. And then in a way, the start will align themselves if you believe in yourself and in your own long-term goals. And then as academic, I think my next advice would be to uh, never stop learning. It is very important that you can learn from the people around you and also teach something to the people around you. And if you are in a position where this is no longer the case, then probably move on and, and start somewhere else where you have the, the chance to, to grow and to make other people grow. Also, as part of our uh, career development, eventually we start from being engineers, very technically focused, uh, very deep into the details of the everyday challenges that the business has. And then as you grow up uh, in, in the company hierarchy, you definitely are required to have a lot more uh, soft skill, such as people, communication, emotional, and that's something that should not be neglected and should be part of our uh, continuous uh, learning. Uh, finally, I guess, uh, because I've learned it uh, the, the hard way of myself, it is very important to enforce your own rules in terms of having um, a good work-life uh, balance. Uh, it's very easy because of our ambition and our determination and focus to let work expand and take up all of our time. Uh, but we have to be strict ourselves, uh, just like we are in our jobs, also in terms of our rest, downtime, and maybe some sport to make sure that we can recover and be ready to, to deliver again on the workplace. That is actually really, really well said. And I think it's a really um, true reflection of an individual and I guess their um, abilities. Um, you know, for me, I, I certainly agree with you. It's about self-belief. Um, it's a, about empowering yourself. Um, and it's also, as you say, it's about getting that work-life balance um, because obviously through your extracurricular activity, um, you can develop those skills that you need in the workplace, which ultimately go on to complement each other. Um, but no, I, I can see that you are a fantastic employer. And you know, probably... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but you speak such true words. And, um, and I, could, I could imagine, again, you um, will be, you know, as you have been inspired to, to follow this path, you will be inspiring many others. Um, you know, to pursue and, and, you know, their dreams and make a difference. So, no, yeah, that's and, great. And, and, and uh, someone told me that uh, when you are in this uh, CEO position, which again is completely new for me, uh, whether you like it or not, people will look up to you and will adapt, adopt the same uh, culture and behavior that you try and, 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 and display. And so definitely I'm trying to make an effort to become the ideal employer. So thank you for your nice uh, words. Yeah, no, 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 I think that's so true. And it's something that, you know, when we're working with students, we, um, you know, we say to students when they're going through the recruitment process, it's very much about finding that ideal relationship. Um, you know, the employer is checking them out, seeing if they've got the skills and attributes and qualities. But you as a candidate should also be looking um, for those qualities and the values in a prospective employer. And again, it, you know, it's making that match and um, creating that perfect partnership. So um, it definitely sounds like, um, you know, a lot of that has been going on at WAM. Thank you, thank you very much, yes. Um, but, you know, is there anything else that you would like to add when we're talking about manufacturing and materials? Is there anything that you think, actually, this is a great opportunity to share this information um, with the audience that we have today? What I would like to add is that uh, arguably Cranfield as a whole enjoys a very close relationship with a lot of established manufacturing uh, powerhouses. Um, that's something that a lot of universities uh, cannot uh, boast about. 
And this brings uh, incredible uh, benefits to the students because as part of their uh, group projects or individual thesis project, they are really exposed to real challenges and also have got the chance to pitch their ideas and show their work to uh, established uh, industrial professional, which is something rather helpful in terms of getting feedback and, and becoming better and also have a taste of what their future life is going to be about. Uh, but then conversely, in terms of uh, spin-out companies, uh, it, it's fairly beneficial to have um, all of these relationships already lined up in terms of you taking ideas out of the labs at the university and then potentially turning them into commercial uh, success. Uh, so I'm certainly very grateful to Cranfield University, first of all, for having given me the chance to develop my career at pace, I would say, and to uh, be able to follow my own ambitions. Uh, and then uh, later on, so in, in the year 2020, uh, to take some of that uh, excellence and uh, translate it to our new spin-out company, uh, which hopefully will become uh, successful as well. Uh, and yet another uh, nice... Uh, um, window uh, to showcase the, the prominence of, of Cranfield on the academic world. Yeah, de definitely. And I, I'm going to add a positive spin there. Um, there's no hopes. It's going to be successful. <laughs> and um, going back to that self-belief that you mentioned earlier, um, you know, you, be you believe in that vision, you have that vision, and I know it will happen. Um, Filomeno, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, your um, input has been invaluable, and I'm sure that you've inspired um, many of the viewers that we have listening. Thank you very much, Katrina, for the opportunity, and I uh, wish you an excellent manufacturing materials week.